Hey everyone, welcome back to the BVTV channel. We are doing another UFC 5 Universe Mode episode. And honestly, oh my lord. Wow, 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 wow. I didn't even get a chance to even do my introduction. Jesus, Jim Rivera gets that early. But no, I did want to say welcome everyone. UFC 300 pay-per-view. Talk about a massive card we got for, uh, we got for it. Let, let me run it down here. In this current fight we have, we're going to see in the men's bandweight division, the ranked number 10, the 6-6, six and six, Rafael Asuncio take on the 10-10 ten and ten former champ. Jim Rivera just dropped down Rafael Asuncio. Of course, we have three championship defenses here tonight. It'll be in, well, headlining the, this pay-per-view is going to be the featherweights. The champ, Max Holloway, 23-10, and 10, takes on former champion, ranked number one, the 15-7, and 7, Brian Ortega. Not to mention, we'll also have a championship title defense in the women's bantamweight division as the 7-2 Irene Aldana takes on a former and longest <clears throat> and longest reigning Bantam, women's bantamweight champion ever. The 34 and 8, the winningest fighter in our UFC uh, Universe Mode history, former champ, ranked number one, Ronda Rousey. And of course, our third championship fight of the night is going to be in the middleweight division. The champion, the 15 and 10, Derek Brunson, will take on former champion, ranked number one, 15 and 11, Luke Rockhold. We have some pretty epic fights on top of this, besides the championship fights, goodness gracious. We have got, we have got in the heavyweight division. We see the return of the th rank number six, the three and one Fedor Emelianenko, as he takes on rank number three, former heavyweight champion, the four and two Tom Aspinall. Let's not forget in the light heavyweight division, rank number seven Alex Prayer, who's three and one, takes on former champion, rank number four, the eleven and four Dan Henderson. We have also got oh there, oh my God, he's getting rocked. We have also got in the welterweight division, ranked number six, Bilal Muhammad, three and two, takes on a former champion, ranked number eight, 13 and 12, Tyron Woodley. Oh my lord, what a shot. Oh, he's rocked. Ooh. Oh, this might be for Jim Rivera. Oh my lord. Jim Rivera getting absolutely manhandled right now. But as I was saying, in the lightweight division, we'll see ranked number five, the eight and five, Michael Chiesa. Jesus Christ, what a shot. Take on ranked number two, former lightweight champion of the world, the 13 and eight, Jorge Masvidal. We've also got in the men's flyweight division, former champion, ranked number four, the six and four, Lee Taylor, take on former flyweight champion, ranked number three, the 12, 10, and with one draw, Juicier Formiga. So I'm going through the whole card in this one. It's, it's a hell of a show here. Uh, in the women's flyweight division, ranked number four, former champ, the 11 and 10 Marina Burroughs takes on the unranked 10 and 9 Rose Nama Yunus. And of course, the last fight I have to mention here, the women's short, uh, star short division fight. It's going to be ranked number one, former champion, the 14 and 11 Claudia Gadella taking on ranked number three, former women's flyweight champion, and I believe even former women's starweight champion, the 18 and 7 Mila Wineland. So this is, you want to talk about a big fight, this entire card is full of big fights. So these guys are actually pummeling each other. Was, again, it was a nice slip off the jab. That was a smart shot there from from uh, Jimmy Rivera. But if I'm Rivera, both these guys aren't really known for their punching ability. It's going to be interesting to see who knocks out who if it gets to that point. I mean, you, you know, when you look at this fight, both the, I think Jim Rivera's got a cut above the left eye. Rafael Sons, I think, above his left. Oh my God, man, the ref plays his left eye as well. But we all know Rafael Sons are a pretty good submission specialist. But he's in there with a guy who can also go on the ground. Jim Rivera's a very lethal wrestler, and this is a grappler, if you will. I don't recommend this for either of these men. I think the way to victory, because they're so evenly matched, is going to be through the stand-up. As you see, they've both done significant damage. The Sun South's head kick is blocked, so no damage inflicted there. You know, a lot of people say those don't land, but even if you're blocked... It's a, a bit of a standstill at the moment. 
That was a nice shot, but the Suns are getting right back up. Both these guys don't necessarily have the greatest hands in the world. Oh, that one clocked them good. This might be it. This might be it. It may be over, folks. I am very surprised at just how well. Oh. Oh, he needed him in the face. Oh, he caught him with the two piece. Jimmy Rivera. He gets a huge knockout to win this fight in the closing moments of round number two. A shot to the body, a hook. And that's all it took. That hook was enough to drop Rafael Asunza, which we know what that means now, folks. Jim Rivera is now 11 and 10 at the UFC, puts Rafael Asunza to 6 and 7. Do, do, do. Okay, I'm not sure what's with the funky music, but I'm here for it. All right, folks, we're going to go on to our next fight of the night. We're going to go to the women's flyweight division. That's right, as we're going to see ranked number four, former champion, the 11 and 10 Marina Mraz take on the 10 and 9 Rose Namajunas. Here we go. And while this happens, as you guys know, I do all the updating and... Um, as we go through through the uh, through the episodes of here clicking, that's probably because I am doing just that. <laughs> so he lost here. You know, it's funny looking at these two fighters. I'm gonna Rose Namunas has a lot to prove. You know, she's hungry, but Marina Mraz is trying to keep that ranking by her name. Definitely does not want to lose it to an unranked person. Nice shot. Looking at, at Rose and I'm Yunus, both these fighters have been very passive so far. It's kind of surprising to see. Because you, you just don't know what exactly you're getting. And I, you can tell they're feeling each other out right now. They're not trying to make any mistakes. Walking through the hotel today, she walked like a fighter who had already won her fight. Just the self-belief is undeniable. That uppercut is good. This but both fighters not doing anything significant. Just missed with the left there. Oh, nice elbow. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh. So now Munis got rocked. Oh, she woo. Listen, regardless of what you want to say about these two, these two are kind of strangers to each other, at least in our universe mode, and ha having not really fought before, that not, at least not that I can re remember. So, you know, for Rose Namuna, she had a horrid record. I mean, a horrid record for the longest of time. So, for Rose, it's do or die. She knows she needs to win this more than Marina Rose. Oh, that was nice. Oh, Jesus, Lord. That's it. That's it. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Yeah, I stopped the fight. Yeah. Rose Namunis making sure this fight did not go another round. Rose Namunis putting the period at the end of the sentence on this one. Goodness gracious, what a fight. I was expecting it to go a little bit longer, but it was the uppercut that really caught her and dropped her entirely. The party's going to be off the hook because she has planned for it all week. What a phenomenal performance by this young lady. And speaking about that, this is going to have massive implications. Ladies and gentlemen, Rose Nama Yunus is victorious. She is now 11 and 9 in the UFC, puts Marina Moroz to 11 and 11. 
technical knockout in round number one. Next up, we are heading to the welterweight division. That is right. As next up, we are going to see rank number six, the three and two, Bilal Muhammad, as he is going to be in the red trunks as he takes on former champion, the 13 and 12, rank number eight, the yellow trunks himself, Tyron Woodley. Here we go. Tyron Woodley, as we know, has got immense knockout power. I would like to say that Bilal Muhammad uh, has hands for pillows. As it, well, or pillows for hand. So when this comes to the stand-up game, it's going to go to Tyra Woodley. But, but, if we look at uh, what Bilal Muhammad can offer here, I think if he goes to the ground, wears out Tyron, he's gonna, he's, he, he is going to win this fight. Put it that way. So I've got updating to do for the last fight. See both these two. Uh, Tyron's got to be careful, because he's not... Why would Tyron Woodley go guillotine? I, I don't... I can say confidently that I'm not a fan of that decision. I think it's a very stupid decision to make. Bilal Muhammad, a really great wrestler. But Bilal needs to defend. He needs to defend. What was that? Bilal Muhammad not defending literally anything. Tyron Woodley just barraged him on the ground, and I can't believe I'm saying that. Ty yes, Tyron, you heard that right. Tyron Woodley just dominated Bilal Muhammad on the ground, almost apparently choked him out, and then literally, literally. I, I am very surprised. I'm very surprised. I, I literally can't believe. I don't understand. Like, I really didn't think Tyron had a better ground game than Bilal. It's just, when you look at Bilal, it just, you just don't... That makes no sense to me. I mean, hey, I, either or, to each their own. Congrats to Tyron Woodley. He is now 14-12 and 12 in the UFC. He puts Bilal Muhammad to 3-3. Three and three. Big victory for Tyron. Anyway, folks, next up, we are going on to the next fight. It'll be in the light heavyweight division as rank number seven, the three and one Alex Pierre, takes on rank number four, the 11 and four former champion, Dan Henderson. Henderson in the white trunks, Pereira in the green trunks. Let's get it going. Light heavyweight bout. Oh, oh, poor Dan Henderson. Why am I saying poor? Oh my lord. Did you hear the Marine say he. Oh. Wait, now Lewis, Alex Pereira not getting rocked. Well, I mean, yeah, were you not expecting a full-on brawl between these two? These two are nuts. Did I believe him? No. So right now, I am so wrong. They are doing exactly what they said. Yeah, shades of Max Holloway against Ricardo Lamas back in the day. God, that fight was nuts. It's wild to think, like, you know, not too long ago that Max Holloway fight with Ricardo Lamas happened. It's... Sometimes I really have this thing to like, wow, that like that's real. <laughs> like it, you know, it makes you feel old sometimes. Oh, he clocked him good. He clocked him good. So Dan Henderson's got to be careful here. He cannot afford to take these these heavy hands from Alex Pierre. It's a very risky thing to do. He says, yeah, it was a decent one. I'm like, okay, it was supposed to be great. Where's the swelling? 
you got to take a close look to see if the guy can compete. Does anyone see the swelling? Appears to think he's still good to go. And you know what? If it's good enough for the doctor. Okay, well, he's, it's good enough to go, but I'm not understanding. Where was the, the swelling? I'm not seeing any swelling on Dan Henderson's face unless it's just his natural face. I, I, I'm just, oh, Lord. Dan Henderson's got to be very careful here because now he's about to be at the mercy. Oh, Jesus. He's about to be at the mercy. Yeah, Dan Henderson thinks about to be taken to the woodshed. Literally. Ooh, I think if he had more umph oh that leg that leg just you heard the crack and you heard the pop I know you did but Henderson's still fighting back and down goes P oh that's it that's it he's out oh my lord I can't believe Pierre just survived that barrage they gotta be is he out Oh no, he's still up. I was like, I thought, I, was like, I thought, I thought he got knocked out right at the right at the bell. I was like, no, nah, he's done. That's, that's that. But no, he's still in this thing. I am honestly surprised that Dan Henderson's jaw has. To, oh well, maybe not for long. Maybe so. Whoa, Dan Hendo. Yeah, literally, Dan Henderson saying he's he's got a lot left in the tank. Oh, oh, he sent him to heaven. Dan Henderson pulled off a vicious knockout here tonight. Dan freaking Henderson. You, you want to talk about definitive knockout, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, that uppercut when he went to the ground, this was rock, this rock, that right there. That was it. If that doesn't connect, maybe he, maybe he gets back up. Maybe. But Alex Piera just got absolutely flatlined. Flatlined by Dan Henderson. Who clearly has shown he still has it. Whoops. So, with that being said, congrats to Dan Henderson on winning this fight. He is now 12 and 4 in the UFC. He puts Alex Pereira to 3 and 2. Uh, big implications here for for Dan Henderson, who was originally a gatekeeper in this fight, knocks out Alex Pereira practically. I'm not gonna say with ease because he got rocked, but one hell of a damn performance from Dan Henderson. Ladies and gentlemen, our P our featured prelim bout of the evening will be in the men's flyweight division tournament the uh, i cannot speak the flyweight division as the former champion ranked number four the six and four lee taylor takes on former champion the 12 10 and one ranked number three juicier for me in the red here we go so i've got some updates during the last fight Oh, wait a minute, Dan goes. Oh, is, he's not fighting back. He is, uh, it's not looking good for, 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 uh, for, for me at all. He's got a nice little triangle. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. For real, I'm very surprised at what we just seen. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Well, damn! I didn't even do the the rankings for the last fight. 
side as he pounds him out for the TKO. I'm hoping I get an invite to the after. Well, geez. Okay. Well, well juicier for me, everybody. Monday. Let's take a look at the replay of the knockout. Just wins in dominant, fa literally dominant fashion. Finally, he found the one that hit the exact I, I, that, spot. I don't, I don't even think. I really don't even think he tried. I don't even think Lee Taylor honestly tried at all in that fight. It, it was it was just it uh, you blinked and you missed it, ladies and gentlemen. Juicier for me get now 13, 10, and one. He puts Lee Taylor to six and five as we go on to the main card. And we kick things off in the heavyweight division. That's right. Rank number six, the three and one Fedor Emelianenko takes on former champion rank number three, the four and two Tom Aspinall. Here we go. Tom Aspinall could win this fight if it was just a kickboxing match, but he has got a decided grappling advantage, and most people believe eventually if this fight hits the floor in transition, it's going to be very interesting to uh, to see what's going to happen here between. Fedor and Tom Aspinall for Aspinall win here is huge against the legend and it would definitely probably get him back up into a you know contender status of you know staking a claim to that heavyweight title but Aspinall's already bleeding off the, the right side of his face here this is not good Uh-oh. Look at the dodging ability, the, the uh, uh, evasiveness here from Tom Aspinall. He was not trying to catch those hands. I said Aspinall, former heavyweight champion of the world. Uh-oh. That might be it. Oh, I don't know. Oh, he, he sat him down on his ass. Just over two minutes to go in what has been a furious round one. A furious, these two are just going balls to the wall here and just going ham. Like, this is, this is a war. This is hardly a fight. It is a war. You ready to hear him saying throw that hook? You already know what they're calling for. Got the hook in quickly. Both fighters exchange in the pocket here. Oh, there's the single. That's a nice single. This is exactly what Fedor needed. That's if, that's if, and that is if he can do it. If he can be successful. Tom Aspinall has a decent wrestling background, too. Let's not forget that. Yes, he's got the mount, but can he really do anything with it? I think that's the real question that kind of we're glossing over, if you will. Why do you feel like every time Herb says stop, stop? He's always like pleading for their life, like please stop it now. Oh, good night. That's it. That is it. That is it. Good heck. Holy Lord, man. That. That. You can, that's an ESPN highlight right there. I mean, come on, that was, like, the impact, the impact of that. Bruce Buffer now with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean. Well, we can skip that, we don't need that. But, let's put it like this. 
What a effing knockout from Fedor. And that Fedor keeps winning. I said Fedor's only loss is to Mike Tyson, our heavyweight champion of the world. Fedor Emelianenko now 4 and 1. He knocks out Tom Aspinall. Aspinall now 4 and 3. He's going to have to go back to the drawing board there. Um, you know, like it. That's how could he sent him to the shadow realm for God? Like, come, come on now. But next up, this fight right here is going to be in the lightweight division. A huge fight on hands. The ranked number five, the eight and five, Michael Chiesa takes on former lightweight champion or multi-time lightweight champion at that point. Ranked number two, the 13 and eight, Jorge Masvidal, who may have just dropped him out cold. As I am still trying to catch up because that heavyweight fight. Uh, oh, oh, wow, it's over. It's over. Okay, okay. Well, it looks like catching up is not going to be in the name of the game for me. Because Jorge Masvidal just reminded everybody who in the hell he is. Literally. Congrats to Jorge Masvidal. He is now 14 and 8 in the UFC. He puts Michael Chiesa to 8 and 6. Welp. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say to that. That that, that was way. We're, we're flying. Kind, we're kind of flying through it, I guess, you know? Anyway, next up, it's going to be our final non championship bout of the evening. That's right. And honestly, what I think many people are calling the people's main event, it's going to. We're going to see in the women's short division, rank number one, former champion, the 14 and 1, Claudia Gadella, take on former multi. Division champion, rank number three, the 18 and seven, Mila Wineland. Who could? If, I mean, you got to think too, folks. If she closes a knockout victory here, she's got to be the number one contender coming up for that woman's story title. You know, it's got to happen. Carter Gadell eating a lot of shots early here. This is not good. You can, you know, her corner's going to be kind of concerned here with all the damage she's taking in this early minute. This is a fight that I expect to fully go a full three rounds. As I now have to like catch up. Good lord. Some of these fights have just ended so quickly. I'm like, how is this possible? And hopefully you guys are ready for the actual real life UFC 300 pay-per-view. I'm stoked for it, man. Pereira, Jamal Hill. That is a huge freaking fight. In position for a submission attempt here. Oh, that looks tight. This has got to be it. Actually, get the armor. Mila Wallen could be tapping out. I think she almost tapped there. These submissions don't really, don't really work like that in this game. It's a bit different from last year's, or the last one, I should say, actually. She tapped her out. Claudia Gadello taps out Mila Wineland. I got to say, that's very surprising. That is the most important win of her career. She's back at number one contender. No matter how you look at it, it's the most important. Because look at that. She chokes. Look at this. She, she, she tapped her out. She tapped out someone who I don't remember the last time. Mila has been tapped out, folks. That's the thing. So look at look at this crowd. Normally I don't play play this anymore because who cares? But look at the crowd. Congrats to Claudia Gadella on a huge win here tonight. 
She is now 15 and 11 in the UFC. She puts Mila Wineland to 18 and 8. As we're going on to the championship portions, uh, the, cha the remaining fights, which are all championship fights, the championship card is here. We kick things off in the middleweight division. That is right. We are going to see the champion, the 15 and 10, Derek Brunson, take on rank number one, former champion, the 15 and 11, Luke Rockhold, the champ in the green trunks. Rockhold. <laughs> Oh, why didn't I give him the championship trunks? I completely forgot to give him the championship, the championship trunks. My, my bad, y'all. But Derek Brunson, the champ. Rockhold, the challenger. Brunson was, uh, well, it captured the middleweight championship off of Michael Bisping, a man Luke Rockhold hates dearly. And while this fight goes on, I got to update three different divisions. That is a nasty, nasty hit. So every time you hear that like leg crack, man, I just absolutely cringe because you just know it's gonna, it's gonna be extremely painful for someone to just walk in on it. It's not, not for the faint of heart, man. Oh, Rockhold getting rocked. No pun it. Well, pun pun intended, actually. Did he quit? He quit, didn't he? He quit. The fact that Luke Rockhold just quit like that absolutely pisses me off. I mean, I get being rocked multiple times. Where in this thing was he rocked? Where? Oh, where? I mean, either way, you know what? Congrats to Derek Brunson. A well-earned, well-deserved victory. Putting away the imposter contender, Luke Rockhold, who I can guarantee won't be getting a title shot anytime soon after that biz abysmal performance. Luke Rockhold, 15-12. and 12. Derek Brunson, 16-10. and 10. Congrats to Derek Brunson. Well-earned. Well-earned, my friend. Wait, next up, it's arguably the fight that maybe I think everyone wanted to main event the pay-per-view, but I, it, this was a tough one to put it as the main event, but we put it as the co-main event because the Women's Bantamweight Championship is on the line. I, the 7-2 and two, Irene Aldana taking it to the former champ, the, win, the most winningest fighter in our UFC Universe Mode history. And the longest reigning champion we've ever had, ladies and gentlemen, the 34 and what was it eight, I believe, the 34 and eight Ronda Rousey, the challenger, looking to reclaim her throne after she was unsuccessful in becoming the for inaugural Women's Liberty Champion in our uh, WWE Universe mode we've seen earlier this week. And Rousey getting absolutely manhandled by Irene Aldana. It's the past. <clears throat> it's, it's a past legend of our UFC universe mode meeting potentially the current. Ronda Rousey getting absolutely manhandled. Good night. Irene Aldana decimates, destroys, obliterates. The legend of Ronda Rousey here tonight. There is a new GOAT in the women's bantamweight division. That's right, and her name is Irene Aldana. Say what you will, but let's be honest now. This is the Irene Aldana era. And with performances like this, there's no way you can deny that. Congrats to Irene Aldana, 8-2 in the UFC, puts Ronda Rousey to 34-9. and nine. In many ways, folks, I gotta say, 
I was expecting a very hard-hitting fight to go a very long time, but Irene Aldana had other plans for Miss for one Ronda Rousey. And so let's go on to this next fight, shall we? I don't know why I like couldn't just talk right there for a moment. It was like dur. So far, why is it not? What is with my controller today? There we go. As I was just so confused, like why is it doing this stuff again? It's been acting weird all day today, even when I was playing on PC. But next up, folks, it is the main event of the evening. That is right. It'll be in the featherweight division, the champion, Max Holloway, who comes in at a 23-10 and 10 record, takes on the challenger, former champion, the 15-7, Brian Ortega. Holloway, the champion, the champ trunks, Ortega in, in the red trunks, the challenger. The welterweights have been handled. Now for the lightweights, because Michael Chester just like absolutely choked. Here. So these guys are landing, they're slipping so some half decent shots. And honestly, I'm here for it. That's that's how it should be. Uh-oh, Holloway's getting hurt. They got checked. Beautiful kick lands there. Down to three minutes now to go in the round. Goodness, you can hear the click, 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 click. That's all shot after shot. Just absolutely humbling someone. Champ, look at that redness underneath his elbow. A lot of those strikes to the body starting to pile up. Getting beat up and being smart enough to not be head hunting the entire time. I like this. I like this approach. Anyway, I am here for the approach. It's a really great approach from both these guys. Both these guys are absolutely tearing each other apart. Oh, here's the, here's the thing. Brian Tate's got to be very careful. Max Hall is going to eat a lot of punches to do some damage. He's got to be aware of that. Oh, good night. Good night. Oh, my Lord. Good night. <laughs> Max Hall said he is not going to be dropping this title anytime soon. It's funny how we had three championship fights. Every champion tonight defended their title successfully. I think it's like a first for us with a, in this era, this new way of, of doing championship title fights. We've, but hey, congrats to Max Holloway. He is now 24 and 10 in UFC. He puts Brian Ortega to 15 and 8. Folks, we have one more part of this episode and you know what that is it's the award so let's get to it so of course performance of the night submission goes to claudia gadella uh, performance of the night knockout uh, you know what performance of the night knockout i've got a couple people it's going to go to dan henderson it's going to go to irene aldana and and it's going to go to fedor emilianenko those are our three performance of the night knockouts and, and fight of the night, respectively. Hmm. Fight of the night also is going to go to both Pierre and Henderson. So with that being said, everybody, please do leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the BVTV Gaming Channel. We will see you all next time, everybody. Stay off the hook, and as always, peace out.